I'm Andy Reesmeyer. Welcome back to Dweebcast. So today we're doing a new segment called the Science of Sci-Fi where we take the, I don't know, crazy worlds of science fiction and see how they stack up to the real world of real life. Today's topic is clowning. Joining us right now, a biology lecturer at the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana, Joanne Manister, you're a biology lecturer. You're gonna to talk to us about cloning. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for asking to join you on your show today. So you see all of the movies here that we're looking at right now. Uh, there's Orphan Black, which is a TV show, but also uh, Star Wars, uh, Moon, The Sixth Day. Cloning in movies, pretty prevalent actually in the sci-fi genre. Joanne, how realistic is this in real life? It's not very realistic to create a brand new human from scratch. Although we've been able to clone about 20 different animal species, we haven't been able to clone a full human being. And then we have to jump over that huge ethical hurdle. How, how would you clone a human? Is it the same principle? So let's say we wanted to create a clone that's not na nature made like identical twins. What we would do is to take an egg from a female donor we would remove her DNA and we would take DNA from the person we want to clone. We put all the DNA a human needs into that egg and that egg gets shocked, it gets implanted into a surrogate and hopefully grows. Why is science not out there cloning humans all the time? It's because we've been working with animals and we find that these animals have physical flaws and they also live a shorter amount of time. They also are not very good at reproducing. Now you've mentioned a huge ethical hurdle in cloning humans. Can you tell us a little about what that might be? Are we doing it just for curiosity? Are we able to do the kind of studies that are non-invasive that would give us a lot of information? That might be okay, but there's that slippery slope of what can we do with this identical being. So we uh, asked you to tweet out uh, a question to all of your followers. You asked if you think that, or if anybody thinks that there are clones, human clones being made in covert laboratories. Uh, we got some interesting responses. When I asked, well, are there any covert labs creating uh, clones like Dyad Institute on Orphan Black? The answer is pretty much, well, if they were, they were using this animal technology, but ethical people wouldn't bother with it and so it seems this is not happening so like in the tv series orphan black which i know that you are a big fan of uh the, the clones yes. are actually unable to reproduce what's the thinking behind that they put an actual change in the dna sequence so that the uteri of all these women have fibroids and they cannot reproduce except one and that's why she's an anomaly and if anybody's following the series that's why she's being sort of pursued. All right, now let's move on to the sixth day that Arnold Schwarzenegger vehicle. It definitely had a very poignant scene uh, involving a company called Repet, which is where you could go if your dog died and have a clone made. This actually is happening in real life, right? Yes. Yes. We can clone dogs and it has happened. And uh, the man who did this, who was in charge of the project, actually went down in shame because of the ethical missteps he's gone through. So this is available commercially though. I mean, you can pay $100,000 yes. and have your dog brought back to life, so to speak, but not quite, right? So the dog, they overall look like your German Shepherd, but the markings won't be exactly right. Uh, the personality may very much not be similar. Hmm. In Jurassic Park, dinosaurs were brought back to life in the form of terrifying clones but it's a little bit different to clone something that's been extinct for millions of years than a dog that may have just recently passed away, right? Some Russian scientists think they have enough DNA to be able to de-extinct the woolly mammoth. So theoretically though, it is possible, albeit very difficult, to make Jurassic Park. And you probably wouldn't make it using um, a mosquito encased in amethyst, right? Right. Okay. That DNA would have been broken down and uh, fragmented to be able to use. Joanne, you are bumming me out here. I was a little bit excited, but that's okay. Joanne, thank you so much. Where can we follow you on the internet? Well, I am several places. Uh, I am on 
Twitter at Science Goddess. You can find me on Google Plus, where I like to engage uh, more extensively with my followers. I have a website called Joanne Loves Science, and I'm also at Scientific American at a blog called SciVid, where I look at TV, um, science and TV, video and film. Thank you so much. I'm Andy Reesby. Thanks for watching Dweebcast. Tweet us at Dweebcast. Let us know. Do you think cloning will ever actually happen with humans? Is it good? Is it bad? Let us know also in the comments below. If you plan on cloning your dog when it dies, I'm Andy Reesby. We'll see you next time. Hey! <laughs> hey! Oh, oh, God. Love oh, me. God. Love me. <laughs> <laughs>